spectacular views of the Caribbean are just the beginning at Frenchman's Reef and Morning Star Marriott Beach Resort. Discover a place where turquoise waters meet clear blue skies, where fine dining and poolside bars delightfully coexist, where fun and relaxation are an art form. A Marriott dream vacation awaits you here on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's all here at Frenchman's Reef and Morning Star Marriott Beach Resort. Now, as you can see, don't you love technology? <laughs> yeah, no problem. There we go. How are the girls? Uh-huh. Come on, boy, just a little. Scott. <laughs> Business is tough, but with great offers at Avis.com, we give you the space to turn your business trip into a bizcation. Avis, it's your space. Nelson Hall back in the uniform. Hopefully that will come uh, within the next few days or we'll see. Travis Smith to Jake Gollin. Jake's open for a three. In and out, no good. Rebound, Wake Forest with the rebound. Big Travis McKay. He goes to Miller McIntyre and tries to make a bounce pass down low to Thomas. Travis Smith got his left foot out there to knock it away. Madison Jones will check in. Out goes Miller McIntyre. Madison Jones, 6'1", freshman guard from Raleigh, North Carolina. Demon Deacons basketball down on the baseline, 29 on the shot clock. Jones will go in the corner to uh, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh gives it right back to Jones. Jones acted as if he wanted to drive inside, now backs it back out, picked up there by Jabri Bryant. Jabri trying to get into his grill, bounce pass right side. Kavanaugh, a whole lot of contact, bodies uh, scattering on the floor. Kavanaugh went one way, Travis Smith went the other, and I believe Travis, who tried to draw the charge, picks up the personal foul. Third foul against the Bears, two against the Wake Forest at this point. 15-22 to go in the first half, 10-5 is the score Bears lead, thanks to uh, a couple of three-point shots by Thomas and Gollin. They need to wipe up some perspiration off the baseline where the two players, one from each team, went to the floor. We're all set to go. Demon Deacons will make the pass inbounds. It's picked off, intercepted. Jabri Bryan over to Travis Smith. Bears going into the front court. Over to Jake Gollin. Jake trying to go inside. Kicks it out to Jabri. Now Bud Thomas in the corner. Back to Jabri. Back to Travis. Top of the circle. Travis guarded there by Madison Jones. Backs it back out. Waits for a cutter, nothing open yet. Travis goes all the way back out to half court. Now goes baseline, stops, bike shot up good. That's a typical Travis Smith move. Penetrate to the baseline and then lay it up and softly off the glass. In it goes. Mercer's lead, the biggest of the game, 12 to 5. Jones directing the attack for Wake Forest. He averages 4.7 points per game. Pass goes right side over to Makai. Makai, the big guy, makes the pass left side over to Harris. C.J. Harris averages 15.3 per game. Makai averages 13.3. They go inside to Thomas. Thomas drives inside. Beautiful left-handed hook. Little baby hook over the uh, front of the rim. Soft touch with success. And it's 12-7. Bears on top. Looks Bob Hoffman directing traffic across the way for Mercer. Looks Jeff Busdelic for Wake Forest. We've got contact and a foul. Will be charged against Wake Forest. Checking in for the Demon Deacons, number 45, Arnaud William Adalamoto. Moto is a 6'6 freshman forward from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Jabri Bryan will make the pass inbounds. Last foul was charged against Madison Jones. Each team now with three. Travis Smith to Jabri Bryan, top of the circle. Jabri left side over to Bud Thomas. Kavanaugh fell down, so the Bears immediately go inside to Corsi for a little baby jumper, got it to go. Bud Thomas spotted Kavanaugh falling down. He immediately went inside to a wide open Corsi for an easy shot. It's 14-7. McKay on the other end almost walked. Instead, got his feet back down, hits the side of the backboard, got it back, going to go inside. Corsi with the block. Down goes McKay. Bears have the basketball. Bud Thomas into the front court, spins, gives it to Travis. Three ball up, no good, no offensive rebound. Demon Deacons now on the outlet pass to Jones. Jones bounce pass baseline on the layup. Oh, it went in. Wow. Moto put it up off the rim, and it just kept spinning and spinning until it made its way into the bottom of the net. 
14 to 9. Bears with the lead. They've got the basketball. Travis is double team. Goes over to Gollin. Gollin in the corner. Jabri Bryant. Bryant a three-pointer. Bingo! Bears have connected on uh, three threes in the first half. 17-9. Mercer with the lead. Something we, uh, the Mercer fans, did not see in the uh, first couple of games. There were no leads to enjoy. Kavanaugh on the right side trying to drive against Corsi. Corsi with another block. Two within the last two possessions. Two out of three possessions. But Thomas will walk it into the front court. Bounce pass to Jake Gollin. Lobbed to Corsi on the baseline. It's going to go over his head and out of bounds. Just a little bit too much. Jake Gollin holds up a finger. My bad. Kevin Conaveri will come in for the Bears. Kevin, the 5'11 junior guard from Charlotte, North Carolina. Also, Darius Moten, who uh, had his best game scoring for the Bears in the last contest. Darius is a 6'6 junior forward from Bowden, Georgia. Boy, had just a monster block and uh, also a dunk in this tournament. Darius has really progressed very much as a Mercer player since he uh, came to uh, Macon. 17-9 is the score. Bears on top as Jones comes into the front court, goes right side over to McKay, gets a screen. Now he's picked up by Corsi on the change in man-to-man. Uh, -man. Jones takes the uh, pass, goes inside, loses the basketball. It's on the floor. Everybody seemingly is going for it. It will be a jump ball, the possession arrow pointing toward Wake Forest. Shot clock is down to 16. Game clock at 12-24. Wake Forest basketball on the baseline down to our right. Wake Forest one and two, the Bears two and two. Playing the last uh, game here in Paradise Jam before heading back uh, to the mainland tomorrow. Inbounds pass off the hands of Mackay. Chris Smith took it away from Thomas. Gonna go the other end, missed the uh, layup. And Wake Forest has the outlet pass. It's Jones trying to go against Canaveri. We've got contact, Canaveri drew the charge. Oh, what an outstanding defensive play. Canavari had to hustle back and save the possession at the last possible split second. Got his feet planted and drew the charge against Madison Jones, his second foul. Bears, on the other end, have missed three layups. The, uh, Mercer has an eight-point lead. It could be larger if uh, three layups had gone down for them. Canavari, who just made the outstanding defensive play, the pass to Moten. Moten goes inside, pass to Corsi down low. Corsi turnaround jump shot, missed by uh, Heat. Wake Forest has it, and they've got a man wide open underneath the goal, and Corsi's going to make the ultimate mistake. Got it down low to Makai. There was no doubt he was going to make that when he was wide open, and unfortunately for Daniel, tried to make a play anyway, so it's going to be an and one for Wake Forest. First, it's a media timeout. Bears on top 17 to 11, back in one minute with more on the Mercer Bears BB&T Sports Network. My life is Come visit my islands, the United States Virgin Islands. Visit St. Thomas for the 60th anniversary of VI Carnival, April 22nd to 28th. Call your travel agent to book today. The United States Virgin Islands, home to beautiful beaches, culture, and people, is also home to the University of the Virgin Islands. For 50 years, nationally accredited UVI has excelled with quality and affordable education. Whatever your passion, you'll experience education at its finest with small classes in diverse undergraduate and graduate programs. UVI is the ideal learning environment, historically American, uniquely Caribbean, globally interactive. A champion never rests, never stops, never settles. So we didn't. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is NBA 2K13. Executive produced by Jay-Z. Towson defeated Kennesaw State 69-63, and it was Duke number nine. The Blue Devils, 88. Florida Gulf Coast, 67. After the Corsi foul, going to the free throw line will be Travis McKay to attempt the free throw for the end one. He's an 84% shooter, makes it look easy. 
And it's now a five-point deficit, 17-12. Canavari will direct the attack now. Travis Smith getting a well-earned breather. Travis coming into the front court, guarded by Miller McIntyre. A little scoop bounce pass down to Jake Gollin. Jake just had his pocket picked. Moto picks it, and he's going to go the other way. Pass over to Miller McIntyre. Missed the layup. Second attempt, however, is good by Travis McKay on the offensive rebound. Bears into the front court. Jabri Bryan kicks it out in the corner. Chris Smith going to put up a three ball. He's fouled, and he's going to go to the line and shoot three. Foul committed by Devin Thomas. And Chris Smith will go to the line to shoot three free throws. I believe this, this will be Chris's first free throws of the season. He uh, shot from the left wing, but uh, certainly Bob Hoffman pointing toward his forehead like guys. We've got to uh, think a little bit more. I would uh, tend to read that's what coach is passing this way. Monty Brown is uh, back in for the Bears. He's on the floor with Jake Gollin, Chris Smith, Jabri Bryan, and Kevin Canavari for the Demon Deacons. It's Miller McIntyre. It's Makai, Harris, Thomas, and also Moto. Well, we lost the basketball momentarily. We've retrieved it. It was uh, into the bleachers up there. Chris Smith will go to the line to shoot free throws. Wake Forest has come storming back to cut it within three. 17-14. Smith's first free throw is too strong off the back of the rim. He'll have another two chances. Bears had a uh, sizable lead a moment ago. It was eight points. Second free throw, good by Chris Smith. Coming in now, Travis Smith, the uh, other, the one of two seniors, Travis Smith and Chris Smith are the two seniors for Mercer. Kevin Conover, who made the excellent defensive play a moment ago, will retreat to the bench. Third free throw, rattles and falls. Chris Smith connects on two, but Thomas will come in. Chris Smith goes out. Score now 19 to 14. Bears on top by five. 11 21 to go in the first half of action. Coming into the front court, Miller McIntyre. He's picked up by Travis Smith. Monty Corsi on the switch now helping out. Ball's rotated on the right side over to CJ Harris. Harris goes back door to Devin Thomas. Tried the left handed floater. Couldn't get it to go, a little bit too soft. It came back on him. Bears have the rebound. Jake Gollin has it over to Travis. Travis running the point. Another game without uh, the All-Atlantic All, All Atlantic Sun Conference point guard, Langston Hall. Travis went to the floor, couldn't get back up. And Miller McIntyre will dive down on the floor with him. It is a jump ball. Possession arrow points to Mercer, so the uh, Bears will keep the basketball. Shot clock is down to 22. They'll have the basketball just in front of Andy Stabell and I here courtside on uh, this side of the floor. Good contingency of Mercer folks and Wake Forest, as you might imagine. Chase Fisher will make his way into the game for the uh, first time this afternoon. Chase, a 6'3 sophomore guard from Ripley, West Virginia. But Thomas, the inbounds pass to Travis Smith to set up for the Bears. We're almost halfway through the first half. It's 19-14 Mercer. Ball's rotated around to Bud Thomas, top of the circle inside Jake. Back door, Travis for the layup. He missed another one. Not him, he himself, but Mercer as a team has blown four layups. Monty Brown kept it alive over to Travis to Jake for a three. Gollum too strong, no good. Boy, the Bears are shooting themselves in the foot today with missed layups. That's at least four close, very close shots that have been put up and came back out. Moto has it for the Demon Deacons over to Miller McIntyre. Now right side over to Fisher, just into the game for Wake Forest. Backs it back out, out to Miller McIntyre. He swings it over to C.J. Harris on the left wing. Now down low to Moto. He backs in against Jake Gollum, traveled with the basketball. Turnover by Wake Forest. That would be their sixth of the afternoon. Bears have four, much better than uh, the opening of the game on Saturday when they had uh, one point, 10 points and 10 turnovers. Travis Smith into the front court, guarded by Miller McIntyre, gets the screen by Jake. Pass goes right back to Gollum. He's wide open for about a 12-foot jump shot. Basket's good, 21-14, and uh, Wake Forest wants a 30-second timeout to talk things over. Coach Jeff Buzdellick wants to talk with his squad. 
Let's check a couple of numbers on our screen. Looks like Mercer is uh, 50, uh, 7 of 16, 44% early on. Wake Forest, 6 of 13, 46%. Bears are 3 of 6 on threes. Wake Forest uh, yet to attempt one. Free throws, Mercer's 4 of 5, Wake Forest 2 of 3. Scoring-wise, you've got Jake Gollum now leading the Bears with 5. And for Wake Forest, Mackay with 5 points. Second time, the uh, two schools who uh, historically have a lot in uh, common, both academically and uh, with their uh, earlier historical ties. And uh, we've got a good one here this afternoon. This one could be one of those that goes uh, right back and forth all day, right up to the final whistle. Wake Forest in the front court. Miller McIntyre goes left side over to Harris. Harris guarded by Jabre Bryant. Kicks it out to Fisher. He's going to turn around, shoot the three. Nobody home for the Bears. And Fisher makes the uh, Bears pay with the three. Wake Forest is uh, first tray of the afternoon. It's 21-17. Travis Smith goes to Jake. Looks back door for Bud. Bud shakes his head no. Kick out. Travis Smith on the wing. Back to Gala. Now to Bud Thomas on the left side. Looks down low for Monty, nothing there, so he dribbles inside. Kind of bumped and into the midair he goes. Came back down, the official ruled traveling. Turnovers now for the Bears go to five. Wake Forest basketball, clock at 9-13 in the first half. Bears lead 21-17. They've led for several moments in the contest. Fisher had the three again. This time Bud Thomas is there to uh, apply the uh, pressure. Top of the circle goes Miller McIntyre. Uh oh, Fisher head fake. He's open, cuts inside the three point arc, shoots the jump shot. No good. The rebound controlled by Wake Forest. Jake Gall and Monty Brown ran together. Thomas was there to pick it up once it hit the floor, got the easy basket, and it's 21 19. Gollin, top of the circle, left side to Jabri Bryan, lobbed down low, Monty Brown. Monty backs in off the right side, couldn't get it to go. Rebound. Devin Thomas kicks out to Harris. Wake Forest can tie and take the lead with 8.30 to go in the first half. Fisher, top of the circle to C.J. Harris, waving some uh, with his hand for Miller McIntyre to come to the top of the circle. Fisher has the basketball on the right wing, backs it back out, Bud Thomas guarding him. Bears have gone to a 2-3 uh, zone as Thomas works his way inside. Shot no good, but somehow got his own rebound, makes the pass out, got Miller McIntyre open momentarily. Bears recover. Wake Forest rotates the ball over to Harris. He goes inside, down low. Look at that reverse layup by Thomas. It wouldn't go, but again, Wake Forest gets the rebound, puts the shot up. It won't fall, but the foul charged against Mercer. Boy, the Demon Deacons are really crashing the boards. We've got a media timeout, 7.57 to go. Mercer with a two-point lead. We'll be back in one minute with more on the Mercer Bears bb &T Sports Network. Welcome to Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas, the Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort. Experience the Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort, Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. No passport required. Forest, six for Mercer. That uh, would be where uh, Wake Forest is doing most of their damage. And the other thing is uh, there have been at least four blown layups that uh, Mercer has missed on the uh, go down to our left. Anthony White, Jr., end of the game for the Bears, the 6'2 junior guard from Indianapolis. Daniel Corsi also back in for Mercer. 
on the free throw line is Devin Thomas. The left-hander got the first one, just the uh, soft touch, floated it over the side of the rim and in, and it's a one-point game, 21-20. Mercer shooting 41%, Wake Forest 44. Big difference, those uh, rebounds. The second free throw is no good. Daniel Corsi ran it down, got the pass over to Travis Smith, and the Bears will come into the front court. Now the lead down to one, 21-20. Travis goes right side over to Anthony White, Jr. He's guarded by Harris, back over to Gollum, top of the circle. Gollum inside to Bud Thomas. They reject that, knock it away. Makai has it. He's trying to go coast to coast, but somehow the Bears took it away. I think Daniel Corsi got a hand on it, knocked it over to Gollum. Bears are running now. Anthony White goes to Bud Thomas down in the corner, back outside to White. White, left side on the wing, over to Travis Smith. He's picked up there by Chase Fisher. Pass over to Gollum on the right side. Bud Thomas is open for the three. Bingo! But Thomas connects on a drug, long three for the Bears, the uh, fourth of the afternoon. And the lead back up to four, 24-20 for Mercer. Top of the circle, Travis McKay goes left side over to Harris. Harris spin move, trying to get away from Thomas. He's in the paint, almost shuffled his feet. Good defense there. Bears coaches thought there might have been an extra step inside the uh, paint a little bit. Back outside it goes to Harris, over to Miller McIntyre, right side Fisher. Fisher, the left-handed drive to the top of the circle, 10 on the shot clock. Pass goes right side of Miller McIntyre. In the corner, long three put up by Makai, no good. It's going to run into the corner, and Anthony White Jr. soars high off his feet to pat it over to a teammate. Corsi now to Travis Smith. Travis had a pass deflected to Jake Gollum, and did we have goaltending or a foul? Ball ended up with Jake Gollum. I thought we were going to get a goal 10. The ball might have been slapped on the backboard, waiting for the official rule. Looks like Jake's going to go to the free throw line. And uh, Gollum at the line, 26-20 is the uh, score. The foul will be charged against uh, Devin Thomas. Clock is stopped at 6.29, so count the basket on the goal 10 and put Jake Gollum at the line for the and one. Gollum ended up with the basketball off of a pass that was deflected by Wake Forest. Jake hits the free throw, and the Bears have uh, turned it back around to a seven-point lead, 27-20. T.J. Hallis checks in for Mercer. T.J., the 6'9", sophomore forward from Weddington, North Carolina, into the front court, Miller McIntyre. Pass right side over to Fisher. Fisher, the left-handed drive, top of the circle. Over to Mackay on the wing. Mackay to Harris. Harris, pass right side to Miller McIntyre. He's double-teamed. Corsi almost intercepted the ball out there. Got the pass over to Fisher. Fisher looks inside. Shot clock's down to 13. Kavanaugh had it bounce off of his knee. Turned around. Jump shot. I think he thought the shot clock was further down to zero than what it was. He had about six more seconds. It's Mercer's basketball. Travis Smith into the front court. All the way down Anthony White Jr. White drives the baseline. Shot short. Got his own rebound. Back up. Missed. No good. Another rebound by Anthony White Jr. Knocked out of bounds by Wake Forest. Well, certainly Anthony White Jr. has provided some spunk for the Bears trying to get some rebounds. Early on, Wake Forest was uh, dictating the boards. It's now a little bit closer at 13 to 9. Travis Smith makes the pass inbounds to Hallis. T.J. soars high into the air at the top of the circle, waits for Travis Smith, hands him the basketball. Smith trying to get away from Miller McIntyre, dribbling with the left hand, trying to get some separation, and we've got a hand check foul, as they say. Foul will be charged against Wake Forest, their seventh of the first half. On the afternoon, Mercer is five of six at the free throw line. Travis Smith, one of the best Mercer free throw shooters, will be at the line. Jake Gollin comes back in. Corsi will come out. Anthony White Jr. went out. Bud Thomas back in. But boy, nice spurt provided there by Anthony White Jr. with some energy and crashing some boards on both ends. Travis Smith will go to the line. 5.34 remaining in the first half. Mercer leading 27-20. Travis takes his time. Oh, in and out, no good. And we've got Jake Gollin, I think, pushing off on a rebound. He and Makai ran together. Makai ended it up on his shoulder, and Jake picks up his first foul of the game. Sixth team foul against the Bears. Madison Jones in for 
the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Wake Forest out of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Mercer out of the Atlantic Sun. Into the front court comes Madison Jones, picked up by Travis Smith. The left side goes the pass to Mackay. Mackay to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh rotates it over to Miller. McIntyre on the right side. Jabri Bryant has him covered, stops his dribble, waits on some help, cannot get it to Jones, and now he does. Baseline, it's loose, going out of bounds, and we're going to have a foul charge against uh, whom? Looks like uh, Jake Gollin will pick up the foul, battling Jones down on the baseline for a loose basketball. Bears uh, would have liked to have seen that one result in a different situation. The ball was sailing out of bounds. Jake tried to uh, battle down there for it. He picks up the foul. He'll go to the bench now with his second personal foul. Daniel Corsi comes back in at the free throw line. Madison Jones, a 57% free throw shooter on the season. It's a seven-point Mercer lead. First free throw up and good for the afternoon. Wake Forest is four of six at the line. Another opportunity forthcoming. Five, 12 remaining. Second free throw no good, and somehow Wake Forest ended up with a rebound and another foul. Wow, Mercer player had his hand on it. But hustled by Travis McKay, he got the rebound, put the shot up, he's fouled, so Wake Forest is going to go right back to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. That's the eighth of the first half against the Bears. Foul's going to be charged against T.J. Hallis. Free throw up and good, so uh, Wake Forest starting to uh, benefit by trips to the charity stripe. And the lead is uh, 27-22 for Mercer with 5-10 to go. Another opportunity for Makai. He's got uh, five points in the contest. Now he has six, and it's a four-point game as Mercer comes into the front court. Travis Smith picked up by Madison Jones. Jones hooked around, knocked the ball loose, and Makai just ran over Travis Smith. And they're going to say Makai last touched the ball. Boy, Travis is probably wanting the tag number of that tractor trailer that ran over him. Travis was already on the floor. Makai dove over him for the ball. Good hustle by both teams. And uh, with 5.01 to go, it should be, I believe, Mercer's basketball. Makai, I believe, last touched it and out of bounds it went. Kevin Conaveri is going to check in as well as Darius Moten for Mercer. They're trying to wipe up the perspiration on the floor right at the scorer's table. They uh, had a good view of that action over there. Last touch by Wake Forest. Bud Thomas is waiting the basketball to make the pass inbounds. Waits to get it to his point guard, Kevin Canavari. Canavari into the front court with the Bears leading by four. Bounce pass to Bud Thomas, top of the circle. Left side over Travis Smith. Travis pivots the ball left and then right. Gets a screen by Por Corsi. Falls down, loses the basketball, and then Corsi makes a foul trying to get it away from Makai. Well, a little uh, foul that... Obviously, Corsi wished he could take back. I'm not quite certain what uh, Daniel looks as if he was trying to pick his pocket. The ball was loose. And instead of going for the basketball, Travis uh, went for the back pocket of the Wake Forest player. As a result, the ninth foul of the first half, and Makai is going to go to the other end to shoot a one-and-one. 4.44 one. remaining. Makai at the free throw line gets it to go. So Wake Forest is taking advantage of... Uh, bonus situation and they're now seven of ten at the free throw line tj hallis in Corsi goes out Corsi and jake gollum both with two fouls in the first half 444 remaining it's 27 24. mckay has a chance to cut it back to a two-point game he missed it however and hallis gets the rebound from mercer over to conavari and kevin pats the top of his head to uh, signify the play for the bears Gets a screen by Moten, goes to Hallis. Hallis quickly inside Darius Moten. Darius lost it on the way down, taken away by the Demon Deacons. Another turnover by Mercer. Pass goes to Makai on the right wing, down low. Kick out in the corner to Miller McIntyre. Spins, wanted to go to Devin Thomas. Passed it too hard, and it bounced off Thomas into a teammate. Now the Demon Deacons will go back into the corner. Shot by Miller McIntyre, an attempted three. Bounced over the backboard. It's going to be Mercer's basketball. Well, according to the stat sheets, eight turnovers for Mercer, seven for Wake Forest. Bears had ten turnovers very quickly on Saturday in that game against uh, Illinois Chicago. 
Dylan Poston will come in and see his first action of the afternoon for the Bears. Dylan is a 6'4 freshman from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Also, Lawrence Brown seeing his first action. Lawrence, a 6'5 freshman from Kansas City. So a lot of the younger guys getting action here late in the first half. Kevin stops his dribble. Cannavari just threw it away. It's intercepted by Wake Forest. Kevin got it right back. He's knocked down. And is there going to be a foul charged against Wake Forest? Cannavari ended up with the basketball. He was knocked down by C.J. Harris, and Harris uh, very blatantly and obviously does not agree with the call. His first foul of the game, Cannavari made the bas bad pass, then stole it back, and that will take us to a media timeout. Mercer 27, Wake Forest 24, back in one minute with more on the Mercer Bears. Drove the baseline and made the basket, but got fouled. Foul charge against Travis Smith, and he connects on the three-point play. Thought Madison Jones may be favoring an ankle just a little bit. Might have tweaked it there while he drove inside. He's going to take a breather, and Fisher will come back in. 
lead is down to two, 29-27. Similar type game the Bears played against George Mason where they led most of the day. Mercer would love to see the end results better in this one. Bears break the pressure, go in the corner. Bud Thomas, Bud gonna shoot a three, too strong, no good. And we've got pushing and shoving and the guilty party, according to the referee, is gonna be Wake Forest is C.J. Harris. Jake Gollum will go to the line for the Bears. Jake has eight points this afternoon, three of seven from the floor. He's made one three, he's made one free throw. Monty Brown will check in for the Bears. Harris over uh, talking with his head coach, Jeff Buzdelic. 314 in the first half, it's 29-27, Mercer with the league. Jake Gollum's free throw, too strong, no good. Rebound's gonna be chased down by Miller McIntyre. And he'll bring it into the front court. Canavari is playing defense against him. Spin move, stolen. Jabri Bryant picked the pocket. Jabri trying to go the other way. Ran off without the basketball. Now approaches the basket. No good, but an offensive reboard and rebound tip by T.J. Hallis. Well, the Bears missed their fifth layup of the day, but T.J. was there for the putback. Good offensive board by Hallis, and it's 31-27. 244 remaining. Fisher on the left wing goes over to Miller McIntyre. Picked up by Jabri Bryan, top of the circle. Thomas. Thomas penetrates inside, kicks it back out. Miller McIntyre going to pull up for the 10 foot jumper. No good. Backside rebound. Bud Thomas for Mercer. Out to Canavari. Bari Canavari back to Bud Thomas to Gollum. Right side Jabri Bryan. Jabri the head fake. Still another head fake, drives inside. He's knocked down, the ball's loose. Wake Forest takes it away. They've got a three on three break. Quick shot by Fisher, bingo for the three. Fisher hits his second three of the game. It's a one point game. Bears with the basketball, just over two minutes remaining in the first half. I know Jabri's uh, feet just slipped out from under him that last possession, but when he went down, Wake Forest had it on the run. Hallett's gonna put up a long shot, no good. Wake Forest with the basketball. They can take the lead with a basket as Makai drives inside, feeds it over to a player wide open. Thomas missed it. Good pressure by Hallis. Devin Thomas had what looked to be a layup. Hallis was there to apply the pressure. Mercer has it back once again with just over a minute and a half to go. 31-30. Kevin Conavari goes left side. Bounce pass to Jake Gollin. Gollin dribble over to his teammate Thomas. Now left side, Conavari, down low, Hallis. Hallis penetrates inside, Bud wanted to shoot the three. Instead, Jabri will launch one, bingo! Jabri Bryan hits one from long distance. Bears Harold their fifth three of the first half. And Bob Hoffman wants a timeout to talk things over. It's back up to a four point lead, 34-30. Mercer is five of nine on three point shooting. Bob Hoffman a 30 second. with eight, Jake Gollin with eight. For Wake Forest, Mackay with eight for the Demon Deacons. Only a minute and 10 seconds remaining. Sybil Blaylock will join us at halftime. Talk some uh, things from the administration of Mercer Athletics and her being on the selection committee for the women of how things are going uh, early in the season with uh, those keeping up with things nationwide. Anthony White Jr. applying pressure against Harris into the front court, bounce pass over to Moto, back into the game for the Demon Deacons, less than a minute to go. In the corner, Fisher wide open, gonna launch another three, this time in out, no good, just missed it, rebound by Chris Smith. Fisher got the look he wanted, it just wouldn't go down this time, and the Bears have the rebound. There's, uh, what, 13, 12 seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Bounce pass to Anthony White, Jr., top of the circle, Makai against him. Anthony taking his time, running some clock, shot clock down to 15. Now he'll pass to Chris Smith over to Conavari. Shot clock down to 10. Conavari, right side, stops his dribble, tries to go down low. Monty Brown, Monty shot blocked by Kavanaugh. 
Wake Forest runs out with 14-13 to go in the first half. Fisher, the head fake, cross-court pass. Mackay is open for a three, shot short, but nobody went for the rebound. Now Monty Brown ties him up. The, uh, we're gonna call a last second foul against Monty Brown. Thought we might have a jump ball, Monty did as well, but the official ruled a foul against Monty. That will send Mackay to the free throw line. Mackay is four of five in the first half from the line. 4.6 seconds remaining, it's 34-30. Mercer has led for almost the entire first half. Mackay missed the first free throw. Mercer's largest lead was at eight with 13-13. I believe Mercer has led the entire game. That uh, would be correct. Darius Moten in. Jabri Bryan in for the Bears. And if Mercer's team would get a vote, this would be the last game they would have to play before Langston Hall can return. Langston has made tremendous progress, worked really hard with rehab to try to get back in. Mercer's next game will be Sunday evening against Furman. Mackay hits the next shot. Bears have four seconds to get it down the floor. Kevin Conaveri going into the front court. Got Anthony White Jr. open for the shot. Shot it too hard. Over the rim it goes, and we are at halftime. At the end of 20 minutes, it's Mercer 34, Wake Forest 31. We'll take a two-minute timeout and be back with our halftime festivities on the Mercer Bears BB&T Sports Network. Spectacular views of the Caribbean are just the beginning at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. Discover a place where turquoise waters meet clear blue skies, where fine dining and poolside bars delightfully coexist, where fun and relaxation are an art form. A Marriott dream vacation awaits you here on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's all here at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. Now, as you can see, don't you love technology? Yeah, no problem. There we go. How are the girls? Uh-huh. Come on, boy, just a little. Scott, <laughs> business is tough, but with great offers at Avis.com, we give you the space to turn your business trip into a bizcation. Avis, it's your space. Come visit my islands, the United States Virgin Islands. Visit St. Thomas for the 60th anniversary of VI Carnival, April 22nd to 28th. Call your travel agent to book today. The United States Virgin Islands, home to beautiful beaches, culture, and people, is also home to the University of the Virgin Islands. For 50 years, nationally accredited UVI has excelled with quality and affordable education. Whatever your passion, you'll experience education at its finest with small classes and diverse undergraduate and graduate programs. UVI is the ideal learning environment, historically American, uniquely Caribbean, globally interactive. A champion never rests. Never stops, never settles. So we did. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is NBA 2K13. Executive produced by Jay Z. to Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas, the Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort.
Experience the Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort, Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. No passport required. This is the Africa you dream of. This is the Africa I dream of. I'm Kristen Kenny, a broadcast journalist who found myself across the world in Tanzania, Africa, with my best friend, Venance, to film a documentary on global peace. You might think, me, being from America, I'm safe from disease. But along the way, I was exposed to one of Africa's biggest killers, malaria. So why won't they see me? Do I? They don't want, they're full. I had malaria and I had severe malaria. My body just felt like it was collapsing and the pain was unbearable. I remember going to one clinic and they were full and I'm sitting down in one clinic like help me please I feel like I'm dying and and they're like we're full and at that moment I'm like wow this is I'm really alone. When I contracted malaria I became just like every other Tanzanian. I was alone in a hospital bed, wondering if I would make it out alive. The only difference is that I had money to be able to pay the small amount to, to save my life, to get the life-saving medication, $7. Four days I was in that hospital. No soap, no water, no electricity. But I was lucky to be alive. Mama Koku was with her two twins when she learned they had malaria. She walked from Kenya, 12 miles away with her babies on her back. By the time she arrived at Kalema Hospital, her son had died. Malaria kills more children than any disease in Sub-Saharan Africa, 800,000 a year. That's roughly the entire population of our nation's capital, wiped out just like that. I didn't understand what malaria was or what it did before this moment. And when I left, I realized something had to be done. I said, I'm going to get back to America and find a way that we can raise funds for people who have malaria. Malaika for Life was created. Malaika means angel to the people of Tanzania. And we are essentially a network of angels fighting malaria, fighting for a better life, one bracelet at a time. This simple bracelet, handmade by the women of Tanzania, not only empowers the women we work with, but also provides life-saving medicine that has treated over 20,000 malaria patients. The action is simple. Buy a bracelet, save a life. We're a year later back in Tanzania, this time with all of our friends from America and Father Alois, yes. who is helping us tremendously on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Today we are going to the pharmacy in Arusha where we purchase the malaria medication. I'm not a doctor, so I need to make sure the nurse tells us what's the best for the people. So this will treat all cases of malaria, severe malaria, chronic malaria. This is shocking. 393 children this will treat, and it cost us almost $400. That's a dollar a life. I mean, how long have you been in the hospital? Three days from Saturday. I had that. Last year I was in here three days, like just like that. You're a nurse, but you you got the medicine for free. But if you were not Hapana free, would you have been able to pay for it? Not be able, not be able, because I'm an orphan and I'm a dead employed. It just hit me because uh, everyone needs it, even the people who have jobs that you think are taken care of. You, the real picture is that they need it. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna check on you, make sure you're okay. I am reminded of my near-death experience and of the importance of this medicine. It's life-saving as shown in the story of Koku. All they need are the essentials, the basics, and for a small amount, they can survive. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, this is Nels Hoggins with the Paradise Jam Basketball Tournament. We are on Cokey Beach. This is my favorite beach in the entire world. It's located here in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. We're going to go out and feed the fish. We're going to go float out and have a little fun. The fish are all around us. It's like swimming in a fish tank. You've got to visit Cokey Beach when you get here. There's no better place. It's awesome. You're massive. You're large. Oh, yeah, we from the Virgin Islands. Now, Joe, now, play me when I say. Now, we run the Virgin Islands. Go stay, go stay, now, go in no way. Oh, yeah, we from the Virgin Islands. Now, Joe, now, play me when I say. Now, we run the Virgin Islands. Oh, yeah, we from the Virgin Islands. My boy, I from Tola. Forget all the talk. Don't remember what they told ya. And yeah, I come from Bellevue. Things real bad, so we callin' it hell you. Just get a ride and come through. Come through, floss and leave stiff like a statue. Eh uh -huh. Them boys will get at you. Man sick like a sneeze, yeah. Hot you, tight grip, pita. Bish, I got you. Talking about girls, yeah, I got a lot too. My bad for ya, ain't even forgot you. Ain't only you blazing. Cali boy, hot too. Reppin' for my hood, you know I have to. Road tongue boy, that's why I have to. Cinema close, so at the college I'll catch you. With that kind of talk, you from Tola, not you. Oh yeah, we from the Virgin Islands, now Joe, now play me when I say. Now we run the Virgin Islands, go stay, go stay, now go in no way. Oh yeah, we from the Virgin Islands, now Joe, now play me when I say. Now we run the Virgin Islands, oh yeah, we from the Virgin Islands. Yeah. B.I. where I rep in, fire guns and Tola, that's where I step in Look at all islands, stories come to see The other islands nearby, just a part of we Two ships on your tongue, one passing PG Some stop on the corner and get to meet Kaiti Stop by the church to see any gather Just before that, you see fish on any fair Don't talk about the sights, like the old mills They going crazy, wanna spend them dollar bills Taxi man smiling, money in their pockets Make a tune, money every pocket Ain't all about money but we got to make a profit When you see us CDs in the stores, go and cop it We carry a zero for the listeners to hear Pure VI talent is what we showing out there Oh yeah, we from the Virgin Islands Now joke, now play me when I say Now we run the Virgin Islands Go stay, go stay, now go in no way Oh yeah, we from the Virgin Islands Now joke, now play me when I say Hi, this is Nels Hawkinson with the Paradise Jam Basketball Tournament again. The last couple days we've taken you to some two beautiful beaches. Now we're going to take you to something a little bit cooler. Cool as in 26 degrees, 4 degrees below Fahrenheit. Inside, that's why I'm wearing this parker. We're going in to see some beautiful ice sculptures. We've got everything going on in there. Come join me. Let's see what it's all about. Let's check it out. We're now entering the magical ice garden where the beautiful fishes and porpoises and sea turtles are all throughout this beautiful uh, ice sculpture area. All done by sculptures from all over the world, from Lithuania, from Germany, from Australia, from Austria. Over here, side right here, take a look into this, Dan. Many of the water sanctuaries are, uh, are protected. In here to your left is a real chapel. People actually get married inside this chapel. And we have got a lovely couple. We've got Fred and Sue. They're looking wonderful. They're renewing their vows today, maybe. Just something really special. And it's just incredible to get married when you are completely frozen. So this is the chapel. Enjoy that. Nothing like being the king of your own castle here at Magic Ice. You can come and we're gonna go up to the bar and set something a little special. But my last name is Hawkinson. And the, the king of Norway, many kings are Kong Haken. So today, I'm Kong Haken son, and I can speak some Norwegian to you. Jael Skadai, which in Norwegian means, I love you. Greetings from Magic Ice.
you guys, but I am freezing. I need to get out where it's a little bit warmer, but you have to check out Magic Ice when you're in St. Thomas, the number one attraction by TripAdvisor, the number one attraction by Nels Hawkinson. highlights, stats, news, and more with little to no delay. Coverage details at verizonwireless.com. Sports Clip. America's haircut place for men and boys presents Guyology. Chapter 1000. Duct tape. Duct tape is tape. Beauty. Leaky pipes, busted taillights, and an alligator's jaws are no match for our beloved silver circle. Guys live their lives a little differently, and we get it. We're Sport Clips, where guys get an awesome haircut while watching sports on TV. Sport Clips, it's good to be a guy. Visit sportclips.com for the location nearest you and MVP it. Now back to Mercer Bears basketball on Peach 96.5. Well, the uh, Mercer fight zone being played over the uh, PA system here. That's a good sign for the Bears as they take the floor for the second half. 34-31, the Bears made the first basket and they uh, somehow held on the lead throughout the first half, but it's all about the second 20 now. It will be the Demons Deacon basketball as we begin playing the second half. Making the pass inbounds will be C.J. Harris for Wake Forest. And there's the pass over to Miller McIntyre. We're underway. Travis Smith picks up Miller McIntyre, top of the circle. A lot of cutting going on down the baseline. There's a pass over to Harris. Now down low, a little scoop shot in and out by Mackay, but he, the rebound pulled down by Wake Forest, and then the shot up by Thomas. He's going to be fouled and uh, get two free throws. I don't know. Okay, that's it. Back in play. Sorry for the delay. We had a power outage there momentarily once again. 34-31 is still your score. There's Test one, two. What? Always on call. For over 20 years, Forsyth Street Orthopedics has been providing Mercer University oh. athletes orthopedic care, making sure they stay in the game. Urgent Care Center at Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Getting better together. Now back to Mercer Bears basketball on Peach 96.5. Sorry we lost you for just a moment. Monty Brown just went in and made a layup with the left hand to up the Mercer lead 36-31. Two games in a row. We had a power outage down to our right. We apologize profusely. Thanks, Janice, getting us back on the air. It is Wake Forest basketball, 18-30. You missed about 40 sec seconds of action there. Fisher has the basketball right side for the Demon Deacons. He'll go down in the corner to Mackay. We've got a foul on the baseline. Let's see if it's against Jake Gollum. If it is, that's Jake's third of the basketball game. Bears uh, led at the half 34-31, got the first basket in the second half, and unfortunately for the Bears, they picked up two fouls. Jake Gollin has his third. Demon Deacons bring the ball inbounds. Fisher has it at the free throw line. 
Pass right side over to Miller McIntyre. Puts up the teardrop. No good. Rebound. Travis Smith for the Bears. Bears have a three-on-three -three break. Chris Smith going to try to take it all the way to the hoop. Off the backboard. Missed another layup. That's at least five layups the Bears have missed. Makai going to go the other way, and Travis tried to knock the ball away. Unfortunately, Smith going to pick up a foul, but that's at least five layups that have gone in and come back out today. And now Bob Hoffman just picked up a technical while uh, voicing uh, his opinion on the far side about the uh, foul charged against Travis Smith, and uh, this could be a bad uh, point in the game. The Bears have a five-point lead. Travis, let's go back to the other end. The Bears missed uh, a layup that uh, went in, came back out. Ball went to the other end. Makai raced down to the other end, made the shot, and now have they changed the technical to a warning, maybe Andy Stabell is passing me a note. At the free throw line is Makai. He alertly grabbed the uh, rebound, raced to the other end. Travis knew he had to make a foul or Makai was going to have a layup. Now Travis has three fouls. Makai will go to the line. Free throw is short, no good. Kevin Canavari and T.J. Hallis in. So the Bears have some guys in foul trouble now. Travis Smith, Jake Gollin, and Monty Brown all with three fouls. Wake Forest will be back on the foul line. Again, we apologize just a moment ago when we lost our power. If you can imagine eight teams and eight radio stations and a whole lot of electrical cords on the floor. Second free throw is up and good. We're just thankful to be back on. And uh, Wake Forest has cut the lead to four with the made free throw. So Mercer with three players with three fouls. Kevin Canavori bounce pass over to Chris Smith. 17.50 to go in the game. Bud Thomas, top of the circle. And we've got a foul charged, I believe, against Chase Fisher. That will be the first foul charged against the Demon Deacons here in the second half. Mercer will have the basketball and a new 35 on the far side by the Mercer bench. Inbounds pass goes to Chris Smith. Chris, right side to Canavari. Canavari trying to get away from Miller McIntyre. Fisher helps out. Pass in the corner to Chris Smith. Head fake. Goes inside. Kicks it out. Bud Thomas for the three. In and out. No good. Forsey battles for an offensive rebound. Puts it up. No good. T.J. Hallis. Another putback. T.J. second. Impressive tip back in in the contest. And the Mercer lead is at 6. 38-32. Wake Forest basketball. Kavanaugh goes over to Fisher. And Corsi is going to pick up another foul that you just wish. That's not the place to get one. Wow, Corsi trying to fight through a screen about 30 feet from the basket. And now Corsi has three. So, well, Mercer has some depth and may have to use every drop of it today. Four players now with three fouls. Basketball is loose. It's on the floor. Kavanaugh lost it to Corsi. Corsi trying to come up with it. Jump ball is now called. The possession arrow points to Mercer. Bears will have the basketball. Look at all those threes in the personal foul category. I think I said four. Let's see. Uh, Travis, Jake Gollin, Monty Brown, and uh, Yelk. Well, they're going to say Corsi with two fouls. I've got him there. It goes with three. The stat sheet just uh, corrected. So. Bears are somewhat in foul trouble with 17.05 to go. Kevin Canavari will bring it into the front court. Mercer protecting a six-point lead. Chris Smith just lobbed it over the head of Daniel Corsi and out of bounds. I don't know that that play has worked once the entire tournament when we try to lob and go low. Of course, you've got all of this quickness among the opposing teams, and uh, that may be one we need to work on before the next outing. Wake Forest basketball, pass to Makai on the right side. Now Kavanaugh, top of the circle, back door, got the layup, up and in, and he's going to be fouled. Miller McIntyre got the back door pass. Are they going to rule it a goaltending anyway? No foul, my correction. The uh, basket's good, it's 38-34. Canavari, as the Wake Forest fans come up on the far side, 16-36 to go, and Canavari just got his pocket picked by Makai and then foul him on the other end. Well, that didn't go well. Canavari got his pocket picked, and Makai, for a big man, he really has quick hands. That's several times today he's ended up with a basketball and headed the other way for a layup, and he is really providing the uh, fire for the Demon Deacons here in the second half. It's still a Mercer lead, but uh, you certainly can sense the momentum right now on the Wake Forest end of the floor. They trail, but uh, at the line for free throws, first one's good, 38-35. 
16-31 to go in the contest. Bob hopping along the far side, trying to get his guys pumped back up. He uh, came into the contest in the tournament without Langston Hall. Now a lot of guys with three fouls. Mackay's second shot's good. And it's a 38-36 game with 16-25 to go. Canavari in the front court. Bounce pass over to Bud Thomas. Bud comes off a screen by Hallis, goes baseline, stops his dribble, looking for some help. Back outside to T.J. Hallis. Now back to Canavari. Canavari on the right wing. Over to Hallis. Hallis goes inside in the corner. Chris Smith, a high arching three. Bingo! Whoa, that one was off the rafters. Senior from Dublin drains a big three for the Bears. It's back up to five. And we quickly got a foul on the other end. Wow, Mercer's going to run out of players at this rate. Daniel Corsi has four, and I don't think Daniel learned any of them. By that, I mean it's the kind of fouls you reach out with your hand and wish you could pull it back. Haven't been hard contacts, but he had his hands out there where they got him in trouble, and that's going to take us to a media timeout. Bears up by five. Spectacular views of the Caribbean are just the beginning at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. Discover a place where turquoise waters meet clear blue skies, where fine dining and poolside bars delightfully coexist, where fun and relaxation are an art form. A Marriott dream vacation awaits you here on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's all here at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. A champion never rests, never stops, never settles. So we did. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is NBA 2K13. Executive produced by Jay Z. Uh, as far as vacationing, sightseeing type things, but uh, Mercer and. Wake Forest, the only two teams without a win in the tournament thus far, and they are battling uh, back and forth to try to get one this afternoon. Wake Forest will make the inbounds pass. Mercer, a whole lot of folks in uh, foul trouble. Pass goes to C.J. Harris. Harris directing traffic with his right hand. Pass over to Mackay. Mackay, a very talented player. He and Travis Smith bumping around. There's a kick out in the corner to Fisher. He's going to shoot the three up and in. And uh, that tightened it up a little bit more. 41 to 39, it's a two point Mercer lead. Travis Smith playing the three fouls is back in. Fisher now has three threes on the afternoon. Mercer Chris Smith goes down low to Hallis. Hallis wanted to go to Bud Thomas. It's knocked 50 feet into the air. Finally, Travis Smith runs it down. Travis is double teamed. Kavanaugh has him at the top of the circle. Travis going to reeve white right, put up his jump shot, no good. Fisher has the rebound, and the Demons can tie it or take the lead here with this possession. Mackay has it top of the circle. Jake Gollin also back in for the Bears. Clock inside of 15 minutes here to go in the game. Mackay just was intercepted. Jake Gollin cut in front of him. Going to make the pass over to Hallis. Hallis to Bud Thomas, and they missed another layup. Mercer has blown six layups at least today on fast break type opportunities. Fisher gonna go inside, off the glass, no good. Gollum with the rebound. Sometimes Mercer can be too unselfish. That time you wanted one or two guys to take the shot, but uh, passing it around and Mercer has missed six layups at least today. But Thomas, top of the circle, waits on Travis Smith to set it up offensively. 17 on the shot clock. It's a two point Mercer lead. Travis goes baseline, off the glass, got it. Typical Travis Smith dribble drive down to the baseline. It's back up to 4, 43-39. Miller McIntyre goes over to Kavanaugh. Now to C.J. Harris in front of the Demon Deacon bench. Drives with the left hand, backs it back up, goes in the corner. Kavanaugh going to try three, in and out, no good. Bud Thomas claims the rebound for the Bears, and they're going to slow it down just a tad. Travis sets up his offense, works it into the front court. 
43-39, to go. Jake Gollin, a screen for Travis. Right back over to Jake. Jake, a long shot up, no good. T.J. Hallis with the rebound. Strong outlet pass to Thomas over to Travis Smith. T.J. Hallis playing the best basketball we've seen in his career. Travis Smith gets a screen by Jake. Pass back to T.J. Inside to Jake. Jake, the head fake, trying to curl around. Kicks it out, Bud Thomas. Three ball up, in and out, no good. Boy, Jake Gollin is uh, being very friendly today, and a couple of times I wish Jake could go ahead and take that shot down there, and now we've got a foul. Fisher was trying to come off a screen, and I believe, let's see if they're going to get Bud Thomas or Chris Smith one for that foul. Chris Smith. Bud Thomas is out. Jabri Bryan back in. This Mercer team very, very unselfish, and there's been a couple of times today, today that uh, if you're a Mercer fan, you'd say, take the shot. <laughs> Coming in now, Anthony White, Jr. Out goes Chris Smith. Wake Forest will be at the free throw line. The last foul was charged against Chris Smith. 13-16 remaining. Mercer has committed seven fouls. Wake Forest with only one. Bears have a whole lot of folks in foul trouble. One, two, three, four guys with three fouls. Harris, a 72% free throw shooter, is at the line for the Demon Deacons. Her shot up and good. Wake Forest on the afternoon, 12 of 21. And at this rate, they may shoot several more before we leave today. Second free throw is good. It's again down to a two-point game, 43-41. Bears have never trailed, but it's been won several times. Smith into the front court. Almost went all the way to the baseline. Goes to Anthony White, Jr. Over to Jabri Bryan on the left wing. Travis comes around from the other side, gets the uh, pass, gets a screen from Hallis, gets a pass over to Jake Gollin. Jake drives inside, again dishes to Anthony White for the layup. Assist Jake Gollin, bat basket Anthony White Jr., 45-41 Mercer. Bob Hoffman doing his imitation of the old side straddle hop on the far side. Mackay, top of the circle to Kavanaugh. He'll rotate it over on the left wing to Madison Jones back in for Wake Forest. Now to Mackay, right side, Harris in the corner, Kavanaugh. They'll rotate it back out. Harris over to Mackay. Mackay, the head fake, going to put up the long shot. No good. Rebound bounces into the corner, claimed by Travis Smith. Travis in the front court, weaving, weaving, left side, looking back right side to Jabri Bryant. Jabri, the head fake, stops, pumps, jump shot, got it. Nice 10-foot jumper by Jabri Bryant, and the Bears up the lead once again to six. 47-41, timeout Wake Forest. It's a 30 that will count as a full. We will take it as well. Back in one minute with more on the Mercer Bears bb &T Sports Network. Macon Occupational Medicine in downtown Macon is the premier occupational and environmental medicine provider in Georgia. The key is to keep your employees on the job, and Macon Occupational Medicine does that through injury management programs, physical examinations, substance abuse testing, rehabilitation services, and safety and regulatory compliance programs. Our highly qualified professional team consists of board-certified physicians, registered nurses, physical therapists, certified laboratory technologists, and other healthcare professionals. The key is to keep employees on the job and our people make the difference. For the most comprehensive occupational services, call Macon Occupational Medicine at 478-751-2900. That's 751-2900. Macon Occupational Medicine, the health of your business may depend on us. Now back to Mercer Bears basketball on Peach 96.5. Well, 12-10 remaining on the uh, scoreboard up above. We've got 47-41, Mercer, on our official stat page and our monitor. We've got 47-40. Obviously, uh, the scoreboard would be uh, the uh, version that is correct that we'll go with. For the game, uh, the Bears, uh, shooting-wise now 44%, Wake Forest at 35. Mercer's made six threes, Wake Forest with three. The Bears 70% at the free throw line, Wake Forest 61. Rebounds are even at 23 apiece. Turnovers, I said, 13 to 12. Mercer has one more than their... Uh, counterpart, Wake Forest. Bears have led uh, from the beginning. It's been to one several times, and it currently is at 6, 47-41. Into the front court, Madison Jones for Wake Forest. They go to Mackay. Mackay back top of the circle to Harris. They rotate it on the left wing to Jones. 
Bears have uh, dropped into a 2-3 zone. Back outside, Mackay. He's guarded by Anthony White, Jr., right side of Jones. In the corner, Harris thought about the three, drives the baseline, intercepted momentarily to Bree Bryan, but then it kicked right into the hands of Jones. He goes to Mackay. Mackay drives the baseline, and the foul will be either against T.J. Hallis or Jabri Bryan down on the baseline. 11.40 remaining. 47-41 is your score. That's going to take us to a media timeout. Back in one minute with more. The Bears up by six when we return on the Mercer Bears BB&T Sports Network. <clears throat> My life is beyond busy. My demanding boss. My needy boyfriend. My girl. Spectacular views of the Caribbean are just the beginning at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. Discover a place where turquoise waters meet clear blue skies, where fine dining and poolside bars delightfully coexist, where fun and relaxation are an art form. A Marriott dream vacation awaits you here on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's all here at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. A champion never rests, never stops, never settles. So we didn't. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is... NBA 2K13, executive produced by Jay-Z. Now, as you can see, don't you love technology? <laughs> yeah, no problem. There we go. How are the girls? Uh-huh. Big guy, and he certainly has uh, earned his way to the charity stripe a few times. First free throw up and good. It's back to a five-point game, 47-42. Jabri Bryan and Jake Gollin have eight points to lead Mercer. Makai's 12 lead the Demon Deacons. Next free throw also good, so Makai is having a field day at the free throw line, 9 of 12. It's a four-point game, 11.37 remaining. Pressure applied in the backcourt by Wake Forest. Bears uh, break that, get it in to Travis Smith to run the point now. Travis stops his dribble, goes to Jabri Bryan on the right wing, back to Smith on the right side. Picked up there by Harris. Travis works his way to the free throw line, going to go inside, kick it out in the corner. Anthony White, Jr., bingo! Bears pick up another three. They've got a seven-point lead, 50 to 43. Seven made threes on the day for Mercer. 11.04 to go. Wake Forest goes inside C.J. Harris, backs it back out in the corner. He's cut off by T.J. Hallis, backs it out once again. Now top of the circle to the big guy, Travis McKay. He'll go left side over to Madison Jones. Now top of the circle to C.J. Harris. Harris inside to Moto back into the game. He goes baseline. Thomas going to spin inside, roll it over the front of the rim, miss the shot. There's a battle for it. The two number twos battling each other, and Travis Smith comes away with it, goes down into the corner. Jabri Bryan going to launch a three. Bingo! Jabri Bryan with another three for the Bears. Mercer's basketball team comes to the floor. The, team, the fans straight up in the air. Wake Forest wants a timeout. Boy, the Bears, uh, with all those guys in foul trouble, just keep launching three. The most recent by Jabri Bryant. about all of those uh, layups that kicked in and bounced back out. The Bears have missed at least five that uh, went in and came back out. You're going to have those in the course of the game, but, boy, some of those 
Uh, we're almost down on the cylinder and kicked back out. Wake Forest with the basketball after the call timeout. Into the front court is Madison Jones against the Mercer zone. Top of the circuit goes to C.J. Harris. Harris in the corner of Mackay. Baseline to Devin Thomas. He puts a shot up off the glass. He's going to be fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. Good thing Mercer has a lot of depth and a lot of players to select from over there because a whole lot of guys with fouls and already with 10-16 to go, the next Mercer foul, Wake Forest will shoot the double bonus the rest of the way in. Moto, who is a 30% shooter coming into the contest, shot that one off the back of the glass, back of the iron, excuse me, no good. It's still a 10-point game, 53-43. Bears shooting 44% for the afternoon. Wake Forest at 35. Ballot scoring throughout the lineup. Next free throw is good by Moto, and it's a nine-point game. A little token backcourt pressure applied by Harris. Travis Smith directing traffic, works it into the front court. 10.08 to go. Travis on the right wing, picked up by Harris. Double team, dumps it over to Jake Gollin. Jake a jump shot. Soft floater will not go on the backside rebound by Madison Jones. Wake Forest trying to push it down the floor. Jones goes inside. Nobody cut him off, and he goes in for the left-handed layup. 53-46 your score, 9.48 to go. Under the front court, Travis sets up offensively, guarded by Harris. That's been a good matchup all afternoon. The pass to Jake Gollum, backdoor Anthony White, junior goaltending. I think there is a foul call. I believe that's going to be a goaltending call. Mercer uh, team is certainly uh, urging the official that it was pinned off the glass. Only the second foul called against Wake Forest. Certainly would be a huge call for Mercer if the basket is allowed. I thought it was pinned off the glass, but I'm not an official. Bob Hoffman restraining his players across the way. I guess they're not going to give Mercer the basket. Anthony White Jr. will go to the line. He'll shoot two free throws. Only the second foul of the half against Wake Forest with 9.37 remaining. Anthony White Jr. at the line. First shot up. Got it. 54-46 coming in for Wake Forest is Fisher and Kavanaugh. White Jr. back at the free throw line for Mercer. 54-46, an eight-point Mercer advantage. The Bears have led from the old get-go. A lot of basketball yet to be played. White Jr., another opportunity. Free throw is up, and he got it. Anthony White Jr. is a good-looking basketball player his first year of playing at Mercer. Spirited guy as well. Mercer now in the man-to-man -man with White Jr. confronting Madison Jones at the top of the circle. Jones goes left side, top of the circle. C.J. Harris, he penetrates in the paint over to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh missed the shot. T.J. Hallis deflected that one, came down with a rebound. Great defensive play, T.J. Hallis. Hallis playing his best game as a Mercer player, that's for sure. Travis Smith goes baseline, off the glass, got it. Travis Smith explodes on the dribble drive. And the Bears have an 11-point lead, 57-46, and you can see energy abundant over on that Mercer bench currently. Wake Forest basketball, Madison Jones, right side over to Mackay, top of the circle, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh going to go back door to Jones. He'll give it up to Mackay for the layup. Nice give and go by Wake Forest, and it's a nine-point Mercer advantage. Travis Smith in the front court, 57-48, clock ticking, 8.37 now. Pass goes over to Travis Smith. Travis going to go to Jake Gollin. Jake drives layup, missed. TJ trying to keep it alive. It's deflected. Fisher somehow saves it into Kavanaugh before it goes out of bounds. There's miss another layup. Three-point shot attempt by Wake Forest is drained by Harris. That was a big shot and halts the current Mercer momentum run. It's now a six-point game, 57-51. Travis sets up offensively, guarded by Harris, trying to get away, gets a double screen, left-handed pass to Jake Gollin. Jake waits on Jabri Bryan, back at the top of the circle. He's picked up by Fisher, right side Travis. Scoop pass down low, T.J. Hallis. Left-handed shot is short. Tried to do a little scoop up, no good. Demon Dickens have it going the other way. They want to go to Fisher in the corner. Jabri Bryan took it away. Jabri's got two guys to beat, including Mackay. Tries to challenge the big guy and missed it. 
Jabri had that one to do all over again, I think he would have pulled it out and saved the possession. Makai with it in the corner. Jabri made a good defensive play, and now we have a whistle. And uh, from the official, it looks like uh, we're at a media timeout. 7.29 to go. It's 57-51 Mercer. Back in one minute with more on the Mercer Bears BB&T Sports Network. See his playing minutes. He's gone just about the entire way for Wake Forest. Inbounds pass for the Demon Deacons goes to Madison Jones. Harris is begging for the basketball from his teammate. Instead, Jones continues to dribble. He's guarded by Jabri Bryant. Trying to get some separation on the left wing goes to Mackay. Uh, Harris coming off a screen. Shot no good, but again, Mackay with a rebound. Corsi blocks one shot, and he gets the second one and then puts a shot up and in. He's fouled. Corsi. Made a block on the first attempt, but uh, got him on the second. Picks up his fifth foul of the game. So Daniel Corsi, uh, with very few minutes played, is uh, going to be gone. It seems like every time Daniel went into the contest, he was guilty of a uh, foul. And uh, now we're going to have to have Mercer will have a substitute for Corsi. Mackay, meanwhile, made the basket. Good block by Corsi the first go round, but on the second attempt, uh, Mackay got it to go back in. Makai has uh, 12 rebounds in the basketball game to go along with 18 points. He's been at a double-double for some time now. Boy, he is a force to be reckoned with on both ends of the floor. He's going for the and one, got it to go, and we're back to a three-point game with 7-10 to go. It's 57-54. Now, of course, he's gone for the afternoon. Into the front court is Travis Smith. Picked up there by Harris. Gets the screen from Monty Brown. Goes over to Jake Gollin. Jake to Brian. Brian looks inside for Monty Brown. Decides no. Bud Thomas back in the game for the Bears. Travis Smith drives inside. He's going to be fouled, I believe, by C.J. Harris. Only the uh, third foul in the second half charged against Wake Forest. It is the third foul against C.J. Harris. Mercer's basketball. The baseline down to our right. New 35 seconds. Jabri Bryan's going to make the pass inbounds for the Bears. Looks one way. Goes to Jake Gollum, the safe pass. Rotating around on the left wing is Bryan. Travis still dribbles the basketball. Bud Thomas looks inside. Wants to look at Monty. Can't get it to him. Back outside Gollum. Jake lobs it down to Monty. Shot up. Got it. Little give and go between Jake Gollum and Monty Brown. Monty off the glass. This time it fell. And it's 59-54 with 6.29 to go. Fisher on the left wing, waits for Harris to come through. Back top of the circle to Bakai. Jake Gollum guarding him. Fisher got the pass, thought about the three, drives baseline, blocked Monty Brown. Fisher gets it back, kick out Harris. He's open for the three and got it. 
Well, it's a two-point game, 59-57. Seems like Wake Forest always comes up with a loose basketball. They've done a great job of that this afternoon. Every time it's uh, batted away, and now we've got contact and an offensive foul against Monty Brown is going to send it the other way. Monty, an illegal screen against Kavanaugh. And with 6.01 to go, the Bears are going to have to retreat defensively. Wake Forest is going to have another chance to tie it up. Well, at 9.13, the Bears had an 11-point lead, and here we are, what, three minutes and 12 seconds later, and it's down to two. Monty Brown goes out. He has four fouls now. T.J. Hallis will come in for the Bears. T.J. has three, so the Bears are going to have limited opportunity on post players the way this is going. Wake Forest basketball. Jones is trying to drive into the corner and another foul against the Bears. Let's see, Jabri, I believe, will pick up his first. Wake Forest on the afternoon, 18 of 28 at the free throw line. Madison Jones will be the next to have an opportunity. 5.50 to go, 59-57. A whole lot of fouls by this Mercer team. And Madison Jones just missed everything on that free throw attempt. Landed on the floor, never got to the rim. Jabri Bryan comes out and Chris Smith back in for the Bears. Boy, what a challenge for this Mercer team. They came in without their point guard, uh, Langston Hall, still injured, and they're battling with three-fourths of the team with four fouls. Kavanaugh gets the rebound on the missed free throw, and they've called a foul on Jake Gollum. Boy, was that a quick whistle. Jones missed both free throws. Kavanaugh had momentarily grabbed the rebound, and uh, are they going to say Chris Smith is uh, charged with the foul? Boy, that was a uh, quick one. Kavanaugh was coming, literally coming down on the floor. Free throws up and good. Well, the uh, biggest stat on the page now would be free throws. Wake Forest, 18 out of 30 attempts. Kavanaugh misses the second, but Makai gets the rebound and knocks down T.J. Hallis for an offensive foul. Great job, T.J. Hallis, because Makai was about to hit a layup and give Wake Forest the lead. T.J. Hallis, boy, may be the MVP for Mercer up until this point. He has played a phenomenal game for the Bears. Mercer with their uh, multi-fouls in the contest. All those folks with four fouls. Of course, he's already gone with five. Travis Smith works his way into the front court. It's a one-point game. Pass goes baseline to Bud Thomas. Bud backs in, kicks it out. Travis Smith, three-point shot, no good. Jake Gollum with the rebound. Goes back up. Reverse layup, Jake Gollum. Oh, what a sweet reverse by the guy from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. 61-58. Madison Jones, top of the circle. Bears have gone into a uh, zone. Jake Gollin's shoulder must really be bothering him because he's holding his uh, jersey with that left arm. Jump shot put up by Harris, too strong, no good. Jake Gollin is battling Madison Jones, and is there a foul called against Gollin? Wow. Well, Wake Forest will return to the free throw line again. They've had 32 opportunities at the free throw line. Jake Gollin now with his fourth foul. Mercer, uh, serious, serious foul trouble as a team. Free throw up, no good, another air ball. Wake Forest has committed four fouls in the second half. The, bow, the yeah, Mercer team has about 15 players with four fouls. Darius Moten in. Mercer uh, has attempted 12 free throws, connected on nine, but Wake Forest, 32 trips to the free throw line and about to have one more. Corsi is gone. Gollin with four. A whole bunch of other people have three or four. T.J. Hallis with a rebound on the next missed free throw. Somehow, someway, Mercer has a three-point lead, 61-58. Travis Smith being double-teamed. Goes right side to Chris Smith, the other senior, down low, T.J. Hallis. Hallis then move inside, goes left, goes right, can't get the shot, but he does draw the foul, and now Hallis will go to the free throw line for the Bears. Boy, T.J. Hallis' confidence today is just off the chart. I mean, T.J. Hallis is a man possessed for Mercer. If somehow the Bears could get out of here with a win today, T.J. ought to get the uh, 
unofficial MVP from the Mercer sideline. Hallis at the free throw line. Shot up, got it. I mean, TJ is a man possessed. <laughs> 62-58. Hallis with six points, six rebounds. He'll be back at the line for another opportunity. 4.49 to go. It's 62-58. Hallis, another chance for the Bears. Got it to go. And look at, boy, you can just see the giddy up in the step of T.J. Hallis. Somehow, some way, it's back to a five-point Mercer advantage. 63-58. Miller McIntyre is going to drive baseline, stop, pull up, jump shot, no good. Bud Thomas has the rebound, trying to go the other way. Goes to post. Bud Thomas. Coast to coast. What a big play for the Bears. Timeout, Wake Forest. 4.31 on the clock. We'll stay here with you. 30-second timeout, 65-58. Unbelievable. Forsey, five fouls. Brown, four fouls. Gollum, four fouls. Smith, three fouls. Hallis, three fouls. And Smith, three fouls. But yet, somehow, some way, this Mercer team has the lead, 65-58. All right, for the afternoon, Mercer now at 46% from the floor, Wake Forest at 38. Three-point shots, the Bears 8 of 16, Wake 5 of 12. From the free throw line, if there's a lining in that cloud, it's that Wake Forest has only made 56% and Mercer at 79%. Scoring-wise, you've got Bud Thomas with 10. Let's see, well, let's start with Jabri Bryan with 11, Jake Gollin with 10. Bud Thomas with 10. On the other side, Wake Forest, Mackay with 19. Harris with 10. Wake Forest has uh, just called the most recent timeout. I believe they only have one timeout remaining. 4.31 to go. Wake Forest basketball. The Demon Deacons from the Atlantic Coast Conference against the Bears from the Atlantic Sun. Into the front court. Bounce pass over to Makai. Darius Moten now will guard him. Darius is a very athletic guy. Pass goes over to Fisher. Picked up by Chris Smith. Back left side, Miller McIntyre. Fisher, who would love to shoot another three. They'll rotate it left side to Harris. Harris back top of the circle. Shot clock's down to eight. Miller McIntyre, left wing. Kavanaugh with the shot clock down to four. Wanted to go in the corner to Fisher. Turned around, jump shot, no good. It's headed out of bounds and a shot clock violation against the Bear. Great defense that time by Mercer and that's going to take us to a media timeout. 3.55 to go. Mercer up by seven. We'll be back in one minute with more on the Mercer Bears BB&T Sports Network. My life is beyond busy. My demanding boss. My needy boyfriend. My girl's night out. Remaining. 65-58. Full court pressure applied by Wake Forest. The inbounds pass goes to Chris Smith. He's guarded there by Miller McIntyre. Now he hands it over to Travis. Two seniors exchange passes and into the front court goes Travis Smith. Bears inside of four minutes. Pass to Chris Smith. Top of the circle. Now over to Bud Thomas on the left wing. He's picked up by Fisher. Inside Jake Gollin. Jake wanted the back door. It was not available. Jake just has the ball batted away by Mackay out of bounds. Shot clock at 15. 
Game clock at 3.35. Mercer leading Wake Forest 65-58. Final game of the Paradise Jam before we head home tomorrow. And the Bears will try to get ready for Furman on Sunday. Bud Thomas will go back out to Travis Smith. Travis gets a screen from C.J. Hallis. Bucked by Kavanaugh. Back over to Jake Gollin for a three. In and out, no good. Tip up, no good. Rebound, Mackay for Wake Forest. Demon Deacons with the basketball. Pass goes left side. Guys wide open. That's Jones. He'll pull up. No, he doesn't shoot. Out to Mackay. Now back over to Miller McIntyre. Back over to Jones again. Reverse layup. Got it. Boy, twice the Bears did not pick him up. Got the basket, and it's back to a five-point game with just over three minutes to go. Bears go left side. Chris Smith, baseline. Jake Gollin. Jake Gollin missed the reverse layup. Too strong. Rebound. Wake Forest. Into the front court is Fisher. 253 and counting at 65-60. Fisher on the right side to Miller McIntyre. Bears are in the man-to-man. Uh, -man. Pass goes to Mackay. He's going to stop, pull up, shoot, and drain a 10-footer. Boy, Mackay is a force. 15 rebounds and now 21 points, and it's a three-point game. 233 remaining. Travis Smith works his way into the front court on the right wing. Bud Thomas, top of the circle. Now over to Chris Smith. 18 on the shot clock, back to Travis on the left wing. Hallis provides a screen, Hallis hits a pass. Hallis goes down deep. Foul is called and TJ put a shot up, uh, almost running backwards toward the basket. He will go to the line, shoot a couple of free throws. Foul is gonna be charged against Miller McIntyre, his third. Only the sixth team foul by Wake Forest, but it is a shooting opportunity for TJ Hallis. Hallis has eight points on the afternoon. He's got six rebounds and is at the free throw line to try to keep this uh, possible or up it to a uh, two possession game. First free throw too strong. No good. Darius Moten in. Jake Gollin out. Jabri Bryan in. Chris Smith out for Mercer. 2.18 remaining. Bears have led throughout. But it's been down to one more times than you can count on both hands. T.J. Hallis gets the next free throw, and it's a 4.2 possession game with 2.18 and ticking. 66-62. Working his way into the front court is C.J. Harris for Wake Forest. He's picked up by Bud Thomas. Hallis helps out. Bounce pass Kavanaugh. Head fake. Thought about the three, and T.J. Hallis is going to be charged with a foul, and he is in shock. Kavanaugh realized he was off balance, just dove into T.J. Hallis, the foulest charge against T.J. And going to the free throw line will be Kavanaugh. Now T.J. Hallis has four fouls. Seems like the entire team is playing with four fouls. 2.04 to go. Kavanaugh at the line, gets the first free throw, and it's 66-63. Bears are hoping to have some bodies left to finish the game. Oh, a lot of fouls against the Bears, more than any game that I think I ever remember. Second free throw is also good, so uh, they ruled that a uh, three-point shot attempt, and Kavanaugh's already made two, and uh, gonna have another. 66-64, Kavanaugh with three free throws, and does, pulls it back to a one-point game, 66-65. Kavanaugh got a break there by diving into TJ and shooting three free throws. 158 to go at 66-65. Travis over to TJ Hallis. Down low, Jake Gollin. Jake the head fake. Missed the layup, but got the tip in. Ooh, Jake came up short, but immediately tipped it right back in, and it's 68-65. 144 and counting in the contest. Harris, top of the circle, make that Jones. He drives baseline. Back over to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh going to stop, plant his feet, shoot, missed it. Rebound Jabri Bryan. Bryan's getting knocked down to the floor, and it's a jump ball, it's called. Possession arrow pointing toward the end of Wake Forest. Only a minute 32, 68-65. Fisher in, out goes Jones. Bears have uh, had the lead all day, but it seems like uh, in foul trouble all day. Coach Bob Hoffman wants a full timeout. We'll take it as well. We'll be back in one minute with the finale. The Bears up by three on the Mercer Bears bb &T Sports Network.
spectacular views of the Caribbean are just the beginning at Frenchman's Reef and Morning Star Marriott Beach Resort. Discover a place where turquoise waters meet clear blue skies, where fine dining and poolside bars delightfully coexist, where fun and relaxation are an art form. A Marriott dream vacation awaits you here on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's all here at Frenchman's Reef and Morning Star Marriott Beach Resort. <clears throat> Rick Cameron here courtside. Final game at the Paradise Jam for both Wake Forest and Mercer. It's a three-point game. Mercer leading 68-65. The Demon Deacons have the basketball on their baseline. A 35 seconds on the shot clock. Miller McIntyre will bring it out to Harris. Harris going to shoot a three and drains it, and it's, we are tied for the first time of the afternoon. 68 all, Wake Forest with its fifth three of the uh, game, and with 1.20 to go at 68-68. Bears go left side to Travis, down low to Hallis, kick out back to Travis Smith. Travis goes inside, stop, pump, shoots, no good. The ball's deflected into the air. Travis tries to save it to TJ. TJ back to Travis. Over in the corner is a wide open Jabri Bryan for a three. Bingo! Jabri Bryan, a huge three with 59 to go. Boy, Jabri was over on the right side begging for the basketball. Got it to him and he drains it. 50 seconds, 49, 48. Wake Forest for the basketball. Bears up by three. Miller McIntyre in the corner to Harris. The head fake and he's fouled and he's going to the line and shoot three free throws. Wow, fouls have been a killer for this Mercer team today, but that one was obvious. Uh, Harris went up into the air, and Bud couldn't uh, redirect his traffic flow from there, and uh, Wake Forest will be at the free throw line. They're 22 of 37 on the afternoon. First free throw is missed off the right side. So the Bears have a chance to maintain the lead with uh, Harris back on the line for two more shots. He's a 72% shooter. Bob Hoffman wants to call a 30-second timeout and does so. 42.9 to go at 71-68 Mercer. Jabri Bryan with his most recent three. Jabri is four of four on three-point shots this afternoon. Now, the Jabri Bryan that many of us will remember when he played last year, Bears went out to Missouri. Jabri hit six shots against Missouri, six threes, and unfortunately uh, damaged his knee and was unable to re return the remainder of the year. But, boy, has Jabri come up big for the Bears today. Mercer now 9 of 18 on three-point shots. Bryan with 14, Gollin with 12, Thomas with 10. Wake Forest has uh, two more threes to go, but uh, boy, that four of four three-point shooting by Jabri is huge. I mean, uh, the ball was loose, everybody battling for it. Jabri was in the corner just begging for the ball and hit the biggest one of the afternoon up until this point. Back on the free throw line is C.J. Harris. The score is 71-68 Mercer. Harris has two more chances from the free throw line. The next one is up and good, so it's a two-point game. If he makes this one, there will be 7.9 seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. Bears have not led. We have been tied. He does get the third and final free throw, so it's a one-point game. Out goes Kavanaugh. In comes Devin Thomas. 71-70. Kevin Canaveri coming in for T.J. Hallis. So it's uh, Canavari, Travis Smith, Jabri Bryan, Gollin, and Bud Thomas on the floor. The inbounds pass goes to Travis Smith. Wake Forest is going to be content to uh, retreat and play half-court defense. Clock ticking 36-35, seven seconds difference between the two clocks. Travis on the right wing, going to try to take it all the way to the rack. And a traveling call is made with contact on the... Uh, go down on the baseline. Wake Forest has the basketball back. Travis Smith called for traveling as he was going to the basket on the right side. Wake Forest is given the basketball with 29 seconds to go with a 71-70 Mercer lead. Shot clock is off. Wow. Mercer sets defensively now. 
a 71-70 game. Wake Forest has the basketball. They can take the last shot. It's a one-point game. 71-70 into the front court comes Harris. Harris is going to drive the baseline. Go to Mackay for the dunk in the lead. 18 seconds to go. 72-71. So the Bears, uh, for the first time today, trail. Kind of thought Wake Forest might run it down and try to take a shot on the buzzer, but they elected to penetrate inside. Kicked it over to Mackay, and that's the first Wake Forest lead of the day, 18 seconds to go. Well, these are the kind of situations you work toward all summer and all during the offseason. You're behind. It's late in the game. You've got the basketball, and what's going to be your A play to try to get a basket and somehow get a win? First time today the Bears have trailed. Wow, all of those layups that kicked in and out. And Wake Forest has been to the free throw line 40 times this afternoon, 24 of 40. As we play with 18 seconds in the uh, game remaining, Wake Forest still has not put Mercer into the bonus situation. Now the next foul would be, so should there be a foul on the floor, it would be a one and one situation for the Bears. Only 18 seconds to go. 72-71. Well, that last play, the Mercer coaches are still scratching their head how Travis Smith walked. Wake Forest fans up to our left. Mercer fans on the edge of their seat to the right. What may or may not be the last possession of this game. Bud Thomas will make the inbounds pass. There it is to Travis. Clock's ticking 17-16. Travis across half court. Sets up offensively 13-12. Travis still driven top of the circle. Goes to Jake Gollin. Jake to Bud Thomas. Back door. Bud the head fake. Cross court pass. Bears lose it out of bounds. Bears just may have let it get away. We had a backdoor play drawn up, and it got off the knee of the Mercer offensive player and out of bounds, and now the Bears, um, if they have to foul, it's going to be a double bonus. There are 5.6 seconds to go. Bears didn't get a shot off, and that hurts. 5.6 to go at 72-71. Miller McIntyre will make the pass inbounds. And now he does to Fisher, probably the best, uh, let's see, Fisher is fouled immediately. Fisher's going to go to the other end and shoot the double bonus. 4.4 seconds to go. Wake Forest did not lead until just a very few ticks a moment ago. 21 seconds was their first lead of the game. Fisher will go to the other end and shoot two. If he makes both of them, the Bears would have to hit a three to send it to overtime. Here's his first free throw. It rattles, rattles, and falls. Oh, my goodness. Fisher shot it off the back of the rim, and it bounced three times before it came back through the net. 73-71. Wake Forest with the lead, and Fisher's going to have another opportunity. Wake Forest has shot about 1,000 free throws this afternoon. They're back on the line to shoot another one. The shot is up and good, so the Bears have one opportunity to hit a three. Bob Hoffman calls timeout on the far side with 4.4 to go. So Coach will uh, draw up what may or may not be the last play of the game. Coach Hoffman talking with his team, 74-71. Well, the Bears would love to have seen what Travis could have done on that uh, penetration drive a while ago, but the traveling call halted that. Fouls have uh, been the difference in uh, opportunities this afternoon. Wake Forest has gone to the free throw line 41 times and connected on 26. For Mercer, it's down to 4.4 seconds, and in order to uh, salvage this game and send it to overtime, they've got to make a three. Kevin Cannavari is standing by his lonesome down on the baseline. We'll wait for a cutter, and Kevin's going to go to Travis. Travis calls timeout at half court. Travis got the T.O. The Wake Forest fans were arguing that uh, Travis stepped out of bounds, but the... Uh, Timeout is granted. 
fraction of a second off the clock, and it's 3.7 seconds now. Of course, the intent of Mercer there was to get the ball up to half court, a much more manageable uh, opportunity to run an offensive set from half court rather than having to go the full length of the floor. Mercer led throughout in this game. They led, they got the first basket, and they've led ever since. But uh, Wake Forest, thanks to a zig and free throws, has worked their way back into it. You've got uh, all those people with uh, five fouls and four fouls and a lot of opportunities for Wake Forest at the free throw line. All the other stats about even. Mercer has outshot Wake Forest. Rebounds are about even. Turnovers are even. But <clears throat> for the Bears, they possibly have one half-court possession left to try to send it to OT. 74-71, Wake Forest. Jabri Bryan with the basketball at half-court. Jabri holds it high over his head, goes to Jake Gollin. Jake's going to put up the three-point shot. It's going to be way short. Jake thought he was fouled. The entire Mercer bench thought he was fouled. Bob Hoffman still talking to the official. There was contact. No foul is called. And, boy, the uh, Mercer team has uh, really got to be hurting on this one. Free throws just really did them in this afternoon. 74-71 is the final score. Wake Forest has a three-point lead. We'll be back in just a few moments to talk with uh, Bob Hoffman. Really a painful game to let this one slip away. We'll be back in just a few moments when we return on the Mercer Bears BB&T Sports Network. 